For more reaction to today's decision, let's bring in our panel. Michelle Girard is RBF Chief U.S. Economist. Scott Martin is United Advisors Chief Market Strategist and a Fox News contributor. We have David Jones of DMJ Advisors. He is president and a former Federal Reserve economist. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, David, what did you think of t today's decision and what did you read into some of the language? Do you think that they're going to go ahead and raise later this year? It was the most shocking non-decision by the Fed I've ever seen, and I've been watching the Fed for a lot of years. Um, the, the surprising thing was in the rationale for this decision, uh, the first statement that was somewhat unusual from Janet Yellen came with the idea that, look, the domestic economy is in great shape, uh, but we're worried now about foreign markets. I cannot recall when the Fed had to explain in the way she did uh, their decision. Normally, with the congressionally mandated objectives of maximum employment, stable prices, the Fed would be paying attention to the domestic economy. So it seems to me the Fed is simply off track and leaving the market with a huge degree yeah. of uncertainty as we look ahead to October and December. You know, I'm glad to hear you say that because I heard some shocking things myself during that news conference and I know people out there are groaning because she talks in such a monotone way, it's hard to focus. But if you listen to the words, she says some insane things like listen to this. The main thing that an accommodative monetary policy does is put people back to work. and since um, income inequality is surely exacerbated by um, a high, having high unemployment and a weak job market that has the most profound negative effects on the most vulnerable um, individuals. She went on to say that it reduces income inequality, loose Fed policy, it creates jobs and reduces income inequality. I, I tweeted this out. 233 people so far retweeted it saying, are you kidding me? I mean, Michelle, what? I, I, I don't know how she thinks that. I mean, this, it's, it's scary. Well, this Fed is doing an awful lot of explaining. They come up with explanations to kind of justify um, their decisions, their actions. Um, I, you know, it's been really you know, disconcerting to be watching this Fed. And I can't, I couldn't agree with David Moore. I, today, I think, was the height of, of everything that, that all the concerns that I've got about this Fed not really being, uh, no guideposts, no, it, it feels like policy is rudderless. It feels like they're afraid, um, are very concerned. I mean, I wasn't really surprised to see the equity market under pressure. Um, I, I think she's only probably fueled the concerns that's been in the equity markets about the global situation, whereas the U.S. economy is, is really in solid shape. To me, that's what should have been the lead story today. And, and instead, it's going to be all about how the global backdrop is, is creating risk for the U.S. economy that has unnerved the Fed. And, and Michelle is a very calm, rational person and, and having the same <laughs> reaction here. Scott Martin, I mean, what do you think about, about her idea that She's creating jobs and, and, and lowering income inequality. I mean, factually, if you look at the data coming out of the Census Bureau, median income, income inequality has risen. During, medium income has fallen. Income inequality has risen since 2009. I mean, she's factually incorrect. Yeah, I don't know what studies you could look at that would point you in the uh, direction that Yellen is, is talking about. I mean, she also talked about how low interest rates create jobs. I mean, yeah. maybe jobs get created in low interest rate environments, but that's not why jobs get created. I mean, it's not because borrowing rates are so low. So there's a lot of things wrong with the rationale. You know, I want to quote a, a very wise young man yesterday who said, I have a confession. I hate the Fed. Uh, that was David Asman, by the way, boys and girls, if you're playing at home, because I'm with him. Uh, I'm getting there myself. The Fed has totally taken this market hostage. And the danger is, I think, to both David and Michelle's point, is what do they do now? I mean, now they've totally put themselves in a box. You've got two meetings left to where they could raise. And now they've got to go into an election year, maybe, where they won't do anything either. So this is a tough trade for both the savers and equity investors with the Fed mm. pulling all the strings.